Welcome to a short introduction to the 2020 State of Natural Resources report. My name is Julie Boswell. I managed the production of the latest State of Natural Resources report, also known as SONAR 2020. The report itself involved many people from across Natural Resources Wales with help from others to advise, provide evidence and review the assessments. This is one of a series of short presentations to explain SONAR 2020. The report is made up of many parts, all available from our website. I would like to encourage you to explore the content and consider what it means for you and your work. Think about how you interact with Wales's use of natural resources, whether those here in Wales or used elsewhere and brought into Wales. I will explain what SONAR is, introduce you to some of the evidence and show you what this means for Wales. I will not be going into the detail of SONAR 2020, there's far too much for this short session. Wales's ambition for the Sustainable Management of Natural Resources, or SMNR, has been recognised internationally as an exemplar approach to the problems the world faces with the climate and nature emergencies. SONAR is a keystone report to deliver that ambition and we completed the publication of its latest version in March 2021. The full report builds on the original SONAR published in 2016. First of all, I will explain how the State of Natural Resources report, SONAR, fits into the evidence, policy and delivery cycle that underpins Wales's approach to the sustainable management of natural resources. SONAR is a statutory assessment of whether Wales's use of global natural resources is sustainable. The report and the evidence contained within it informs Welsh Government's natural resources policy, local development plans, and NRW's area statements. Those plans and strategies in turn produce action. Monitoring programmes and research improve or refine the evidence base which informs the next SONAR in five years time. The content and purpose of SONAR is defined in the Environment Act and in the statutory guidance that underpins it and defines NRW's role. Briefly, this means that NRW must prepare and publish a report containing an assessment of the state of natural resources in relation to Wales. The phrase in relation to Wales is important as it ensures that we consider our global impact, not solely the natural resources within Wales. An assessment of the extent to which the sustainable management of natural resources being, is being achieved an assessment of biodiversity to support the biodiversity duty on public bodies under section six of the Environment Act. State and trends, what NRW considers to be the main trends and factors that are affecting and are likely to affect the state of natural resources. Evidence gaps, any aspects about the state of natural resources on which NRW considers it does not have sufficient information to make an assessment. The statutory guidance for SMNR adds in that we should set out the priorities and opportunities for action at a national level. The report content is all published on the NRW website and you can access it in the level of detail that you require. As you delve deeper into the report, the level of detail increases. The foreword, introduction and bridges to the future sections contain the overall summary of the report, setting out the key messages from the assessment and the national level opportunities for action that the statutory guidance asks for. The natural resource registers provide the outcome of the assessments in an accessible format. The registers are published on an ecosystem basis and contain the pressures and impacts 
and opportunities for action for each broad ecosystem, along with key points of evidence about the assessment of SMNR. The registers can be interrogated using the interactive infographics on the website, which allow the reader to drill down to the detail through pressures, impacts and opportunities by ecosystem, driver and theme. The main sonar assessments are within the four aims chapters. Stocks of natural resources are safeguarded and enhanced. Ecosystems are resilient to expected and unforeseen change. Wales has healthy places for people protected from environmental risks and a regenerative economy with sustainable levels of production and consumption. These four assessments have been made using the evidence and assessments made in the detailed technical chapters of SONAR. These are arranged around eight broad ecosystems and eight cross-cutting themes, which reflect the main drivers of change, such as climate, resource efficiency, land use, air quality and invasive species, and also the biodiversity assessment. These 16 chapters are the detailed evidence assessments within SONAR and can be used to identify specific pressures, impacts and opportunities for action along with the evidence used to draw their conclusions. All of the report is underpinned by evidence and the Wales Environmental Information Portal makes a start in ensuring that it is available to the public, organisations and policymakers. The portal itself is currently in development and we are actively seeking feedback to improve its functionality and content. If there was a single key message arising from the SONAR assessment, it is that Wales is not currently achieving the sustainable management of natural resources. We have some way to go, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Achieving the sustainable management of natural resources is a long term project only started with the Environment Act a few years ago. We are making progress against the aims and just making this assessment is a significant step. The chapters set out the detail and the evidence, but overall they found that Wales falls short of achieving stable stocks of natural resources, resilient ecosystems, healthy places for people free from environmental risks and a regenerative economy. SONAR is different from traditional state of environment reports. It draws conclusions about the relationships between natural resources and well-being to help Wales plan for a better future. SONAR focuses on addressing the drivers of change and managing the risks and potential consequences for well-being. The emphasis on sustainable management allows all of us to question not just the what, but also the so what. The report has been framed around the approach used for integrated reporting by the United Nations Environment Programme, European Environment Agency and others. This approach has been adapted for Wales in particular to draw out information on the potential impacts on the nation's well-being. Assessments are made at different scales, starting with the eight broad ecosystems and eight cross-cutting themes. The themes are used to describe the main drivers and pressures affecting SMNR, for example, for example, climate change and land use. Each of these chapters makes its own assessment of drivers, pressures and impact and recommends opportunities for action. The natural resource registers for each ecosystem summarise these. That evidence has been used to feed into the assessments against the four aims of SMNR. The conclusions, as alluded to already, are the outcomes of the assessments against the four aims. Though assessed individually, it is important to note that they are inextricably linked and should not be seen in isolation. Wales cannot work towards healthy places for people without resilient ecosystems and cannot make our ecosystems resilient without safeguarding stocks of natural resources. 
The regenerative economy safeguards and restores those stocks and is the route to the transformational change needed to achieve SMNR. Looking at each of the aims in turn, aim one, stocks of natural resources are safeguarded and enhanced. Wales is using up natural resources at an unsustainable rate and hasn't met the aim of enhancing and safeguarding natural resources. Just a few examples that have led us to this conclusion are biodiversity is declining, climate change is impacting water availability and flow, the total productive land area in Wales has remained stable for many years, but there are pressures from other land uses that need to be considered more holistically. And across Wales, there has been a decline in soil biota and organic matter leading to reduced quality and function. Also, poor air quality is one of the largest environmental risks to ecosystems and also to human health in Wales. Moving on to aim two, ecosystems are resilient. Ecosystems are assessed against four criteria, diversity, extent, condition and connectivity. Most habitat types have seen a reduction in diversity over the last 100 years, with the rate of decline increasing from the 1970s onwards. This indicates that ecosystems are not resilient and many species are not recovering. If diversity continues to be lost, then it may result in the collapse of ecosystems and the services they provide. Although 31% of Wales is considered to be semi-natural habitat, at least 40% of Welsh habitats are spread out in such small patches that this implies low resilience. Very few Welsh habitats are reported as being in good condition due to a number of pressures. And in Wales, connectivity is at its lowest in lowland habitats, where the landscape has been simplified by the loss of semi-natural habitats and intensively managed land dominates. Aim four, healthy places for people. There is no single assessment which determines if Wales is achieving the aim of healthy places for people protected from environmental risk. But a number of indicators are brought together and discussed in this chapter. These allow us to draw the conclusions that Wales is not yet meeting the aim, including average life expectancy in Wales is 78 years for men and 82 years for women. But there is a stark difference in life expectancy and healthy life expectancy between Welsh communities. Poor air quality is estimated to cause 2,000 deaths annually in Wales, 6% of total deaths. 27% of people in urban areas of Wales and 18% in rural areas are affected by noise pollution. And 245,000 Welsh properties are at risk of flooding. And finally, aim four, a regenerative economy. Wales played a leading part in the first industrial revolution and still bears the scars, including old mine workings, polluted watercourses, intensive agricultural methods and the loss of biodiversity. Heading into the fourth industrial revolution, Wales needs an economy that regenerates ecosystems and replenishes natural resources. Such an economy would ensure Wales only uses its fair share of the earth resources and meets the well-being goal of a globally responsible Wales. Currently, if everyone on Earth used natural resources at the same rate as Wales, two and a half planets would be needed. Just to remind you that all the detail can be found on our website, please take a look around and let us know what you think. Thank you for listening.